Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 13 of our build deploy test with Jenkins 2.0 for Java and C Sharp. In this video, we'll be talking about creating freestyle project for .NET application for building and testing. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 11 and 12 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. All right, so we let's continue with whatever we left in our previous videos, which is nothing but part 11 and part 12. So for that, I'm going to flip to Jenkins. So, so far in our previous video, we were trying to create a .NET freestyle project. And once we execute that, we were getting some kind of errors in this over here, right? So we saw that the problem is because of the MS build, which was not there. So we just installed the MS build. And then while we tried to run that, we got an error saying there was a .NET 4.5.2 version was missing. So I just installed that in my machine. I restarted the machine and now it is available. So now if I try to build this particular job, you can see that it is going to run, but again, it's gonna fail. So if I go here right now, and if I go to the console output once again, you can just scroll down and see that it is failing because this project references NuGet packages that are missing on this computer. So use NuGet package restore to download them. So as we have seen on our slide before, it is referencing some of the NuGet packages, right? So in part 11, we saw that the NuGet packages is something which is referenced for our .NET project, which has to be restored before trying to compile the project itself. So we need to do that as a first step so that it can have all the required DLL which can be used for our project. So we have to restore our NuGet package as well. So for doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my project once again. And here for the NuGet, there is a plugin which you can just specify the NuGet plugin and perform the operation. You can download that plugin in Jenkins and you can install that. But the better way that I used to do is to download the NuGet from Chocolatey. So once again, I'm going to go to the Chocolatey packages. And there, if you go to the NuGet, oops, you can see that you can find a NuGet package command line over here. So you can download this and you can install it in your machine as usual that we did in our previous videos for MS test or Maven, etc. Right? So I have already downloaded that in my machine as NUNIT 3.6 and NuGet. So these are the two tools that I have already downloaded and kept in my machine as a package, right? So I can just do that by referencing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference this new get.exe this time. So as I already said, there is no out of the box support in Jenkin where you can specify the new get packages in your configuration of that particular project. What you can do is basically you can just go to this build action and here you can just execute a batch script and here you can specify the new get.exe right and then you need to restore the packages which is required for this particular project right so in order to do that there is a command called restore which is going to restore the reference package for our project and if you ask me where is this reference project is going to have all the restoration information because in may when we have something called palmer xml file and how about here in the Visual Studio project. So actually, if you go to the project in the GitHub, and if you go to the repo here in the Selenium Inunit param, and if you go to this guy inside the Selenium Inunit param, there is something called as packages.config. So this is the information which is required by NuGet to restore all the packages. So it's going to restore the NUnit Selenium Web Driver for this version and Selenium Web Driver Chrome Driver, SpecFlow and Geeko Driver. So it is going to do all these restoration, right? So that is what is required for the NUnit to be restored. I'm sorry, for the NuGet to be restored. So I'm going to just call this and then I'm going to restore for this particular Selenium solution, right? So now I'm just going to save it because this is going to execute automatically the solution for us. And now if I try to build this time, hopefully it should have the execution without any problem. Hmm. 
what does it says this time this project reference the new get oops I think I have wrongly chosen or what oh my god I think the problem is because we have to do one more thing it is this so you can see that in the build step what we have did is we have to call the NuGet package restore before the MS build itself so we have missed this step right so this is the flow we need to first restore the DLLs files required and then we need to do a build itself right so I'm gonna save it and now if I try to build it this time hopefully it should run fine without any problem let's see if I go to the console output there we go seems like the build is happening and you can see that the five packages to the package.config project have been installed so this is the same package file that I showed you before right so everything is success right now and you can see that this time it is in blue color meaning it is success right so this is how you can do a restoration of package using NuGet and then try to build the project the final thing which I'm going to do is to run a very very simple test and see how it works so for running a test we need to have something called as in unit so in unit is again going to be a separate tool which I have already downloaded from chocolatey so you can also do that so again the option is pretty simple and straightforward here to not in order to run the particular test all you have to do is to specify the end unit in the add build step right and then you can execute the windows batch command and here you can just specify the end unit so i'm just going to go to the tools folder again and then i'm going to choose the end unit console runner i'm going to copy this path and then i'm going to come over here and specify that over here and then if you just specify this particular exe and then if you specify the dll file you're all good to go so in order to specify the dll files actually you have to hop over to your github which i have already installed in my machine and if you go to this github and if you right click to this particular repo and open in explorer you can see that the dll file is actually sitting under bin debug and here is the file right here is the DLL file sitting, the Selenium Inuit Parameter DLL. So I'm going to copy this path and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to paste it over here. That's it. So if I run this particular DLL file, I can just run it. But instead of specifying the hard coded path here, which is not required, I can just delete this fully. And I can just specify the project level path because this is more than enough for me and I'm going to change the forward slash from backward slash right and I'm going to remove this semicolon as well so this is what it is I mean you will have a an unit console runner exe and then the DLL file that's it right so you can see that we are going to restore the NuGet packages we're going to build the solution and then we're going to run a test from this DLL file I'm going to save this again and now if I try to build this time you can see that hopefully if everything is fine it is going to automatically build and then it's also going to run the init console runner you can see that the init console runner is running and right now you can see that the automation testing is also running so it is opening the browser running few tests here there we go and there is one more browser opened and it's also running one more test here boom cool you can see that this also got passed here and the finish and the results is success as well for these two tests right so this is how you can very quickly do a test for the dotnet application as well in the freestyle project for jenkins and you can see that the test got passed here so in our next video we'll do exactly the same thing but rather using the freestyle we are going to make use of the pipeline and we'll also use the stage and we'll see the progress as we saw before in our previous video and with that we'll end our pipeline discussion and after that we'll spin up and start understanding how to work with agents how to work with cross browsers and dockers and much more right so that's it guys once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day